Hey there, Rays fans. It's Rays Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. All-Star Night. It's all about the stars of the sport, the former champs, the current champs, the young up-and-coming stars of our sport battling out for $1 million on Sunday night. And last night, it was controversial and confusing. Let's just talk about all the craziness of last night's All-Star Race. Number one, Ryan Blaney is a millionaire. He captured last night's 2022 All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway, bringing home $1 million to his number 12 team, beating Denny Hamlin, Austin Sindrick, Joey Logano, and Daniel Suarez to be this year's All-Star winner. Ryan Blaney was strong the entire race. Ran to the top five. I don't think he ever left the top five the entire race last night. That car was really, really strong. Played second fiddle in the first stage to Kyle Busch. Then slipped back to about fourth place in the middle of stage two. Then got some track position by the stage three and won that stage. And held it the rest of the way in stage four. Now, here's where it gets interesting. With a couple laps left in the race, as they just took the white flag, Ryan Blaney's on his way off a of turn four to the checkered flag. Checkered flag's waving. Ryan Blaney's the winner. However, a caution flag is waving for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. scraping the wall for turn two. And that did not look like a caution at all because he hardly hit the wall. NASCAR said because of the all-star race... We're not going to let it end under a green uh, checkered caution. We're going to restart the race. And at that time, Ryan Blaney had already kind of unhooked his window net. And that's a mandatory um, a rule for NASCAR drivers that they need to have their window net up at all times. He assumed that the time that the race was over. But NASCAR said, no, 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 no. The caution's out. And because it's All-Star Night, we don't want this race to end under yellow for the fans. And it was a little, you know, he had a big lead anyways, though. But I don't understand why they would just throw the yellow. They decided that they were going to restart the race. And Ryan Blaney at the time was trying to get the window net back up. It was a tough time for him because normally when you're driving a race car, even under slow speeds, and you're trying to work on the window net, it doesn't work well. If he hadn't gotten it up completely, NASCAR would have brought him to pit road. But they got on the radio and kind of gave him a walkthrough procedure on how he could try to get the window net up properly and hold it together for the final two-lap shootout. That happened. He had the two-lap shootout, and he was able to hold them all off and win the all-star race second time and it was controversial ending but it was a big moment for Ryan Blaney and the team because they've been strong this year they hadn't been to victory lane yet and this is not a points event but it's still momentum for the 12 team going forward especially for mile and a half races and it helps not only him but Jonathan Hassel and the whole 12 team it helps them going for Charlotte next weekend with the Coca-Cola 600 and they had best speed the entire night and you know we've already seen lately that Joey Logano got to victory lane winning at Darlington it's only a matter of time before Ryan Blaney wins a race because normally he starts out strong, yet doesn't win, but he eventually punches ticket to victory circle when he's there at the right place at the right time and has everything going his way. So a great night for the 12 team, despite all the confusion at the very end, and that was definitely confusing. As Scott Miller, the vice president of NASCAR Communications, stands by what ha with what happened in the end of the race and how they helped Ryan Blaney. A lot of people were wondering, should he have been brought to pit road to try and fix that? And I'll talk about one of the drivers that was critical about that in a second. But regardless, Ryan Blaney is a millionaire, and his typical tradition when he wins the race is that he lets a young fan keep the checkered flag. It's really, it's just a really nice, all-out, all-around nice dude. So congrats to Ryan Blaney and the 12 team on winning last night's All-Star Race. Number two, Denny Hamlin, so close to the All-Star victory last night after starting a little bit mid-pack. He ran in the top 10 for the majority of the race, and at the start of the final stage, he took some fresh tires and started to progressively work his way up through the field, passing the other Penske guys, but just couldn't seem to run down Ryan Blaney. Now, when that controversial caution came out and Ryan Blaney was having a tough time with his window net, he, Denny Hamlin assumed that if NASCAR was going to black flag him, he was going to be the leader of the race, and it would have been probably him winning the All-Star race. Well, as I mentioned, NASCAR helped Blaney get the win on it up, and he was able to continue, and Blaney won, Hamlin second. And Hamlin was not happy about, you know, giving Ryan Blaney the victory. He thought that NASCAR should have black flagged him and brought him to pit road to fix the window net completely. I mean, he's upset because he came up short, and he would have wanted to win, and he felt like he was maybe kind of robbed. But if NASCAR took the win away from Ryan Blaney because of a controversial ending that they had to sort through, Blaney was the real person that would have been robbed, not Denny Hamlin. So I understand Hamlin's frustrated. I mean, he even tweeted last night. He just said, oh, well, they're going to let Blaney keep this win. Well, guess what? Mark Martin has given back his 1994 Bristol win where he pulled off one lap early before the checker flag threw and gave the win to David Green. So... 
I don't know what to say about this, but I mean, Denny Hamlin, I get he's upset, but at the same time, buddy, NASCAR did try to help Ryan Blaney, and he got it up to a relatively, you know, hold it together the last two laps. So don't whine about it. So I, he's frustrated, I get it, but that's how NASCAR um, handled the situation, and Denny Hamlin just wasn't happy about it all. And I, I bet you he's still not happy right now. Number three, contenders in stage two taken out by tires. A lot of contenders that I expected to be battling for the All-Star win were running up at the front early on, but ran into some problems. The first one was last year's winner, Kyle Larson, running second place off a of turn four behind Kyle Busch. A right front tire blows, and he hits the outside wall so hard, it takes him out of contention for the win. He said he was a little shook up, but he was definitely fine. Um, and it seemed like that they did have the speed early on in that race to win, but obviously taking out in stage two, we'll never know what would have happened. But as a couple laps after that, off of turn fours would come to the end of stage two, Kyle Busch, who won stage one and seemed to be untouchable with how fast his car was, gets loose off a of four, and we see coming on the start finish line, he has a right rear flat and tries to get to the bottom of the racetrack to avoid the oncoming traffic that is coming at full speed. Well, while that's happening, Ross Chastain, who's racing with Ryan Blaney, tries to dive to the inside trying to avoid, but he actually ends up rear-ending Kyle Busch and going a little airborne and coming back down the track and came back into traffic and clipped Chase Elliott, who was a victim of circumstance right there, and taking all three of those contenders out. Um, yeah, the tires for this race were terrible. They, I mean, we've seen tire failures this year, but this weekend it was just absolutely unacceptable by Goodyear's performance with these tires. Right front, right rears. I mean, I mean Kyle Busch, and people are kind of blaming Ross Chastain for not like checking up and trying to avoid while his spotter was really focused on Blaney and didn't realize what was going on between Kyle with Kyle Busch at the time. And Chase Elliott said he could have tried to do a better job to avoid the wreck, but you know what? We'll never know what would have happened, but unfortunately, all four of those contenders were taken out by tires, and we don't know how they would have been if they were able to avoid those incidents and continue on. I'm sure they would have all been a contender for the win regardless, but these things happen. Number four, the All-Star Open, which obviously sets the lineup for guys that hadn't won in the past, uh, earlier this year, last year, or former champions of the sport or of the All-Star race. They had to get in through the All-Star Open to make it to the main event. In stage one, it was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who's been running really well lately, had a nice solid first stage and won that stage and automatically transferred to the next in the main event. And then Chris Busher from Corpus Christi, Texas, a Texas boy, got to drive at his home track in the main event of the All-Star race and by winning stage two. And he also, I think, finished top 10 in the All-Star race. I mean, him and Brad Kozlowski in the final stage ran very, very well. Kudos to RFK, by the way. And then in the final segment, Daniel Suarez, who I thought was going to run away with stage one, but because of Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s solid start, he just fell behind on track position. He was able to get that back and win stage uh, three and transfer into the main event. Obviously, Tyler Reddick, we felt like he was going to make it. He did not because he was trying to run down Reddick, oh, excuse me, Suarez the last couple of laps. And in turn three and four, ran a little higher groove in the resident and got around and spun and hit the outside wall, taking himself and Harrison Burton out of transferring into the All-Star race. So therefore, the fan vote went to Eric Jones, driving the number 43 car, a guy who's been really, really good this year in his second year with the team. Of course, the first year with the merger with GMS. Those guys have been very fast this season, and they had good speed in the All-Star race last night, but they wrecked out late after getting loose and turned forward and hitting the outside wall. But it was cool to see the fans vote the 43 into the main event. I mean, I thought it was going to be either him or Austin Dillon, but I guess Dillon wasn't eligible for the fan vote, I guess. But regardless, those are the four guys that transferred into the main event last night. And number five, the race in the All-Star race. I thought this next-gen car was going to really help Texas Motor Speedway because we've seen how good the racing at the mile and a half has been this year. I mean, even two-mile tracks. Fontana was great. Vegas was great. Um, Kansas last weekend was great. I mean, the bigger tracks this year with this car have definitely improved racing and made it exciting for the fans. I mean, the like, you know, Jeff Gluck tweets out, you know, Paul, was it a good race or not? A lot of the mile and a halfs and the two and the, the trip to Fontana this year, they were all positive above 80, above 90. They were phenomenal races this year. Last night's all-star race, 
that was not a good race period. I mean, you could pass in the middle of the pack, but for the lead, only unless if you get a good restart on the outside or the inside, when you have clean air, there's just nothing the guy behind you can do about it. You can hardly catch up. I mean, I felt like when Denny Hamlin passed Cindric for second place in the closing laps of the final stage, he was going to run down Ryan Blaney on those fresher tires, and it just never happened. Obviously, the controversial caution got Denny another opportunity, even though he didn't do win. But the, the racing last night was not good, and... I hate to say it, folks. I don't want to be. I don't want to be negative. That probably is the nail in the coffin for Texas Motor Speedway on the NASCAR schedule. But SMI says that NASCAR and Texas, uh, NASCAR and SMI have a contract to at least have Texas host two events a year uh, for a cup, and that includes the fall race, which will be back there in October, and the All Star event because we subtracted the points event for this event so we could run it circuit of the americas even though that's not in the contract with smi but it does kind of suck how the racing in texas over the last couple of years it's taken a downfall I, I hate to say it i mean this track has not been the same since they repaved and reconfigured because the banking in one and two is so wide and so flat you can't almost run a second or third groove up there. You can kind of get a second groove with the resin put in, but it doesn't really work. Three and four is the same kind of banging like we used to have on the old surface before we reconfigured it after uh, 2016. But it just you know, I remember when Texas Motor Speedway used to be a really fun mile and a half, and the speeds were fast, and there was good, solid racing all around the racetrack. I hate to say, but I think those days are gone. Unless if somehow the fall race of this year turns it around. I got a feeling that last night's all-star race was the nail on the coffin for NASCAR and Texas Motor Speedway. And they may... I, I don't know what's going to happen at Texas Motor Speedway during the next... Uh, during the future. But I just didn't really like it last night. I mean, there were a couple of moments that were exciting. I mean, if it wasn't for the, the wreck with the main contenders, taking them out and giving other guys the opportunity... It probably would have been an all-star race to kind of forget. I mean, this no one's going to forget this controversial ending, let me tell you. This is one that will be, still be in our memory for quite a while. But uh, besides that, the racing just wasn't there. I mean, they tried. They tried to put the resin. I mean, the restarts, if you get three wide and one and two, that's fine. But then you lose spots and drop back at least five, six spots. So that's the way it goes. But just another all-star race. I mean, is this one we're going to look back on and remember for a long, long time? Well, the ending, yes. The race in general, not so much. But it is what it is. And uh, if I got, I got to say one thing. Can we can we go like can we move the all-star race around? I mean, when we ran the all-star race in 2020, it was not Charlotte. It was in Bristol, and that I mean it, that wasn't the best all-star race, but it's still a good event. We went to we tried Texas last year, and last year's race was def, was was better than this race. Let me tell you something. Even with the 550 package, it was still a better race than this one. But maybe we should try going to a different venue. We could try Richmond, maybe Martinsville. I think would be a great venue for the All Star race. Or we could go back to Charlotte. Or we could try Atlanta. Even on the even as a super speedway type track, now we could try it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to try anything. I mean. Heck, let's 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 do the Charlotte Roval in for the All Star Race, but also keep the fall date because that's a must see event. But uh, those are my thoughts on uh, the last night's All Star Race. So with that being said, it's officially in the books, and it's upcoming weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend where we'll have barbecues, grill outs. We'll honor all the men and women that have fallen while serving in our military, but we will honor their names by carrying their names on the banners of the cars. As we race 600 miles in the Coca-Cola 600, a NASCAR on Fox, it should be quite a fun event as we get to see 600 miles, 400 laps of 37 of the toughest drivers going head-to-head -head looking to be the first atop across the start finish line and win one of NASCAR's crown jewel events. Will Kyle Larson dominate like he did last year and do it again this year, or will the competition bring a challenge to him this time around? It should be a fun Coke 600 I'm making a bold prediction. This is going to be the best Coke 600 we've ever seen since 2005. Now, 2019, that was a great all, uh, Coke 600. But the 2005 race has the record for the most cautions that still stands this day at 22. We could reach that point with this car and how fun it is and how loose these cars are. It should be a fun race, and I can't wait for it. It's going to be a blast. And, of course, don't also forget to catch the Indianapolis 500 on NBC and the Monaco Grand Prix Sunday morning on ESPN. You get to wake up in Monaco for breakfast. You have 
lunch, an IndyCar, and of course you have dinner with the Coca-Cola 600. It should be a fun Memorial Day weekend of racing, the greatest day of racing this year. I'm looking forward to having all those three events on the same day again this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Subscribe, like, and congratulations to Ryan Blaney and the 12 team on winning last night's All-Star Race and now being a millionaire, baby. Have a great night, everybody. Let's go racing.